Hi everybody, my name is Nancy LT Hamilton. I've got over 110 jewelry making how-to videos on YouTube and an encyclopedia-like website with tons of jewelry making information that you should check out after this video. Uh, in this video, I'm stepping out of my normal routine here and we are going to be making uh, COVID-19 face shields and uh, they're pretty dang easy. From what I've read, regular masks help the fabric ones, but if you really want some face protection, add a face shield to that. Uh, it will also remind you to keep your dang hands off your dang face when you're out. Um, according to the U.S. National Library of Medicine, we touch our faces 23 times an hour on average. And the exciting part about that is 44% of the time involved a mucous membrane like your eyes, nose, and mouth. All right, here are some of the things that I use to make the mask. Sharpie for drawing on. These are paint pens. Um, Sharpie also makes paint pens. Needle and thread or a sewing machine if you're going to do a band on yours like that. I sewed it by hand. It was not a biggie. If you are going to do that, you also want a safety pin. Scissors fabric if you're going to do that. Elastic half inch, three quarters inch, one inch, any of them work. Stable remover is nice. It's just lovely. <laughs> a circle template. I'll show you why you need that in a minute. I want to skip that for now. Uh, Velcro and hopefully yours doesn't look like that. So I want to talk a little bit about the transparency film. This is for a laser printer, it could be for an inkjet, doesn't really matter. You want it semi-stiff. Um, this stuff I've got over in this envelope, unfortunately I do not have the name, but it's thicker than the other. I'll probably use that for this project. So here's the basic idea behind the face shield. It's pretty dang simple. I have my, this is three quarter inch elastic. Um, and my fancy pattern down here, I'm going to cover this on my next one that we're going to be making. But one of the, th and this is uh, Velcro. You could just do elastic, but I like being ad able to adjust this if I have a hat on or I have big hair. Or something. <laughs> you never know, your head can grow. <laughs> this gap here, originally what I did was I just laid the elastic across here. And I wear glasses, and this ended up, especially I have, uh, you know, those cat's eye glasses. So the, the shield was smacking me in the nose and in the glasses. So this bulge is important. So I'll talk about how to put this all together. It's not pretty, but it's, it's getting there. So sorry about my funky bench. Those of you that aren't jewelers don't realize that we live most of the time in abject clutter. I'll give you a quick look over to my bench over here. This is what work areas look like. Uh, I'm not alone here and that's actually organized. So <laughs> just want to give you an FYI. So I put this down to hopefully not distract people with my beat up desk. All right, the first thing I'm going to do, especially with this thing, is try to find the end And we're going to measure out three inches on this. Or if you aren't using inches, what is that about? The eight centimeters, más o menos. So I'm going to do three. And that's probably enough. And then I'm just going to cut across the entire strip. We can put that aside and get rid of this. All right, next, the pattern. Really easy, and you don't have to have a cir circle template. I, I, We just, jewelers tend to, but you can use something like this. And all I'm doing is just, a, you could even leave it square, but I like a little rounded edge. 
I think it looks a little more finished. So I'm going to just go ahead and let me zoom in a little bit and move over. Hold on. Sorry. Just draw a little half circle in the corner. Like so. And then you can trim it off. If you want to be really professional and have them completely balanced, you can cut them both at the same time. Obviously, that was what I'm going for. <laughs> so now we have rounded edges. Um, if you're going to decorate this, it's a lot easier to do it before we put this whole thing together. So you might want to lay out your scroll work or, or whatever. Any, any Sharpie that gets on here like this can be taken off with alcohol. I might clean that edge up a little bit. Or not. Okay. So, I don't know about you, but if you were a seamstress, you've always got weird pieces of elastic floating around. I didn't have one long enough, so because uh, I already used it on my other one, other uh, shield. So, I just stitched this together. Uh, as long as it's about the same width, you should be pretty good. And what you're going to want to do on this is, let's see, how long did we do this? I cut out for my head 23.5 inches. You might want to, you know, like take a string and wrap it around the back of your head, around your forehead, and measure that to give you an idea. And remember, it's stretchy, so it doesn't have, you don't want it overly big. Uh, that would be 59 to 60 centimeters, if you care. So with any luck, my, my <laughs> measurement won't come quarter of an inch next to the seam line I just did. So now I'm going to measure out my 23.5 get over here 12 and 10 11 and a half oh boy that I don't really don't even have to cut that do I just take that pin out and cut that little bit off that was fortuitous all right there's my head the circumference so if you want to cover this band with fabric you want to make sure um it's kind of tricky i want to leave some <clears throat> of it open so the velcro works and i also have to have a seam here so these edges aren't ragged so i'm going to fold it like that you could actually stitch that on the sewing machine i am not going to do that so i'm going to just let about it's an inch and a half Almost somewhere about an inch and a half hangover on here and I this is to determine how long to make your fabric by the bit way and don't stretch the elastic out when you're measuring it because you want it unstretched so this I would just cut a little bit here get rid of that now for uh, depending on the size of the elastic you have widthwise this is three quarters of an inch and I am making my seam, what am I doing? I forgot. For the three quarter inch, um, this seam here is it's about an inch, an inch and a sixteenth, something like that. I, I like to make, yeah, an inch looks good. Um, you want to make it so it's easy to thread this through. So make it a little bigger rather than a little smaller. If you're using one inch elastic, it's probably an inch and a half or something like that. I'm not going to sew this one because that is really boring to watch someone do. But essentially, I'm going to mark with my ruler one inch from this folded edge over here. Remember, it's folded. Trim it off and then stitch or stitch and then trim it. It's probably a better idea. This will make a cover for the whole band. If you don't give a dang about the band, let's go on to that. Uh, you want to find center. So this was uh, 23 and a half inches so half of that is 11 point something uh <laughs> this is why i like the metric system so much better so i'm going to measure this in millimeters because it's a lot easier to divide stuff it's about 60 millimeters so half of that i need to make a mark now if you're doing the sleeve you want to make the marks on the sleeve 
after you put it on and I'll do that towards the end of the video I'll show you how to do that so this is this is midway for me on here and then you at the same time you want to mark four inches to the left and four inches to the right or 10.2 centimeters on either side of your mark center mark I'll put the dang thing on the line I mean this doesn't have to be perfectly perfect <clears throat> All right, so I've got these two marks that are four inches or 10.2 centimeters off of center. I'm going to mark that with a C. So if you're not going to do the sleeve, this is what your elastic should look like before you move on too much further. Uh, I'll show you how I thread the seam and all that other stuff after, so in case the people who don't care or don't really want to sit around and watch. So stapler. I don't remember if I mentioned that in the tools. You need that. This is really brain dead simple here. Oh, except for this part. So we want to mark center on this, five and a quarter. That way we can align here. And this staple that we're going to be putting in is temporary. It's just to hold center. I'm going to zoom in a bit. Hopefully I won't go off screen constantly. By the way, this is my favorite stapler I've ever had. <laughs> so easy. Okay, so see how we're not quite to the end here? This is where we need to pull this out, stretch it out to the mark, and then I like to do an angular staple right there, and then another one down the middle, oh. like so. Same with the other side. We're going to pull this elastic all the way down to the edge. Like that. Put in the staple and do a straight. This is where this comes in. If you don't have it, you can try a really fine slot head screwdriver to pry this out. Because remember, I talked about that bulge that we wanted. Um, and that's how you achieve that. We also want to put on our Velcro. Let me go hunting for that. I've lost it. I think I chucked it somewhere. All right, the big trick with the Velcro is it has to go on opposite legs. So this is, the, you want to get Velcro that's got the sticky stuff on the back of it. So one can go here. This is why three quarters inch is nice. Having your Velcro sizes match your elastic sizes is great because then you don't have to cut off extra sticky stuff here. It's better to have smaller Velcro and a bigger elastic than it is to have bigger Velcro, smaller elastic. Okay, so this has to be able to come over and stick this way. So I have to make sure that I put See how this is opposite? So the other one's going to go on the outside and this one's on the inside. Muy importante. Ooh, and that's not very sticky at all. Here we go. Ruining my scissors. So this is not a very long piece, but oh, my I'm going to get another piece. That one's messed up. I'll be back. Voila. So I was also looking at this, the, the fluffy side of the Velcro, thinking if you wanted to put something along this line here that's going to be on your face, this is not uncomfortable at all, but if you wanted something fluffy, you could just stick this part of the Velcro on the inside of the mask here if you so desired. So see now we have an adjustable um, shield. That is so exciting. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to go on. Anybody? So you're done. I mean, this is it. You're done. Uh, for those of you who want to stick around and watch me try to thread things and make that tube, I think you should stick around. Okay, this is the fun part, the glamming it up stuff. <laughs> so here's your stitch tube. If you, did, you were lazy like me and didn't tack your edges down, make sure that they're folded before you start this. Okay, so safety pin. Very important. We want the head facing down in here. So I'm coming in from the outside. Like so. 
I hope I am doing this right. <laughs> we'll find out. Yeah, and then I want to feed the pin in. And see, this is inside out, so we're trying to make it right side out. You sewers know this trick. That's how you make all your ties, bows. And I just, the pin's in here so that you have something to pull on and drag out the other end. And then that slides like that. It's not exciting. I remember when I learned that at like eight, thought it was magic. So I didn't sew the big long one because I'm just going to do this forehead strap. Uh, the longer one would make the back of my head look lovely. But I usually have a hat on right now because it's winter. Okay. So now we've got that. So now we have to feed this through our elastic. And if you're going to do this, I would put the Velcro on post feeding it through because it just makes it a little harder. And then we're going to feed this through the tube. That's why I said make it a little, little wider because it makes life so much easier to feed this if you've got a little extra space around. Come on, Irma. There we go. Yeah. So, um, as you see, I unstapled my shield. Uh, I'm going to need to remark the center. I would, I would have marked this first. I wouldn't have done the other, but uh, I have to find my center again so that I know where to do start my line up. So I need to do that. So now I'm going to get my shield again. Line that up. Make sure your fabric looks pretty before you do this. Okay. And then we've got to do our pull out again. And then this side. So now you've got a band here instead of just a plain white elastic. You know, and while you're at it, you might as well use some double stick and slap a flower on there. Or what I did with the other one is take your paint pen and draw a pattern on here, you know. Where's my circle template? This is tie-dye. I think I need to go all out. Got to let that dry a minute. I'm going to do a peace sign. So anyway, go ahead and do whatever you want to yours. Just make sure you don't draw across where you see. And hopefully this will help make you safer and give you a amazing shield to wear so we don't have to look like we're working in the shop all the time. Oh, so that's it. Thank you so much for coming. I hope uh, this is helpful to you in some way. If not, you killed 10 minutes of the day. Uh, don't forget to check out my website, nancyltheamilton.com, uh, chimeraarts.org, I'll have links underneath, you know, in the description area. Uh, and also check out some of my jewelry videos. You never know. We might bring you over to our side. Anyway, thanks a lot. Be safe out there, world. Love you all. Ciao.